Hello and welcome to another episode of Through an Opaque Lens with me, Niall Murphy. And this is the 3rd of April 2024 as I speak. And um, today I'm going to be talking about Scotland. But I have to go back in time to uh, me about three years and nine months ago, something like that, uh, when I was in Dartmoor. And it all started back then, around about sort of July-ish 2020. Um, when the first uh, time that Scotland was going to be bringing in a totalitarian hate bill under the then First Minister, we Jameer Cranky, Nicola Sturgeon. Yeah, remember her? No, I thought not. Hey, and, um, you know, so uh, I shall first click back to this clip, just purely for the comedy element as well as everything else. This was one of the most prophetic old videos that I've done, and it's amazing how it stood the test of time but it's not good that it stood the test of time, I tell you. So, go back to then and see you at the other end. I am standing out amongst the conifer trees. It is the 26th of July, 2020. And I thought this would be a nice location because it kind of looks a little bit more northern, doesn't it? It's uh, all conifer trees. It looks a bit more northern. And the reason why is because the theme of today's episode is Scotland. Yes, Scotland, the land of the deep fried Mars bar, the land of the haggis, and the land of a certain musical instrument. Shut up! That's better. Right, yes, <laughs> anyway, on with the show. Well, it was something that was brought to my attention that I actually found was pretty disturbing, incredibly chilling, very, very scary, right? A new um, anti-hate speech bill is um, making its way through the um, devolved Scottish Parliament at the moment, and um, it's pretty worrying, you see. In fact, it's, it's really seriously worrying. It's so bad, in fact, that even members of the United Nations consider it to, live, to be a little bit too sinister. It's something that has some serious totalitarian implications. Now, from what I've made out, um, I've done a little limited research I have done into this. It basically means that if you say something that offends someone, you could be looking at a maximum sentence in prison of seven years, right? Seven fucking years. Okay, well, since that time, I've traded in those northern conifers that you saw there on the wilds of Dartmoor for these rather exotic looking coconuts and bananas that you see behind me. And I, I most certainly don't regret it, I tell you. Right? <laughs> you know, one of the other reasons why I don't regret it is that I'm a little bit further away from Scotland now, you know, as well. You know, that's the thing, and especially now. And the, the reason why is because, well, it appears that that bill has been updated. The, uh, on, and, and of all days, on April Fool's Day, that bill was, uh, or that act was updated to bring certain things into um, legislation that were not there. And um, one of those things is, involves you not being able to risk having a private conversation with someone else in your own house just in case they disagree with you and then decide that you are a thought crime or a hate criminal and then they'll go to one of these special centres where they can grass you up to the government and then you get well, I don't know, arrested or whatever for the crime of not having the right opinions about trans people, not having the right opinions about people of other cultures, not having the right opinions about any of the things because the government absolutely dictates with an iron fist Right? Not iron badoo, no. Iron, iron fust. Yeah. <laughs> Got to do it in a Scotch accent, eh? That you are a criminal. You know, possession of white skin would probably be one of those things as well, you know. But of course, Hamza useless, um, or Yusuf, sorry. No, useless. Hamza useless, the present First Minister of Scotland. Incidentally, they haven't kept the fish theme going. You know, first you had um, Alex Salmond, and then after that, um, Nicola Sturgeon. And I was, I was looking forward to her replacement, um, Hamish Muk, Japanese fighting fish. But no, um, he had to give way for Mr. Useless to come along. Now, Back when I done that last clip that you saw me in, around about the same same year actually, 
he was justice minister and he didn't like his uh, portfolio of job positions that he was standing over for one particular reason. They were all white. So here's a clip of him hating whitey from about four-ish years ago and uh, check this out. The Lord President, white. The Lord Justice Clark, white. Every High Court judge, white. The Lord Advocate, white. The Solicitor General, white. The Chief Constable, white. Every Deputy Chief Constable, white. Every Assistant Chief Constable, white. The Head of the Law Society, white. The Head of the Faculty of Advocates, white. Every Prison Governor, white. And not just Justice. The Chief Medical Officer, white. The Chief Nursing Officer, white. The Chief Veterinary Officer, white. The Chief Social Work Advisor, white. Almost every trade union in this country headed by people who are white. In the Scottish Government, every Director General is white. Every chair of every public body is white. That is not good enough. White, 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 I was brought up, I don't know about you, but I was brought up to believe that two wrongs don't make a right. I was brought up um, to think, of course, that, you know, as time went on, especially, you know, me being from an Irish background, being a kid during the Troubles, having a very Irish surname and that, as well as, you know, um, being in the school with other ethnic minorities that had other, uh, you know, perceived disadvantages, like being black or being brown or whatever. Um, yes, I mean, it's a no-brainer that racism is not a good thing. I mean, who thinks it's a good thing? There ain't really anyone out there except some skinheads, Ku Klux Klan members, and a bunch of nutters and a bunch of idiots who think that that's a good thing. I mean, you know, I, mean we, I thought this was all settled. I thought we all knew this. But for some reason, it's okay to be racist against white people if you're not white yourself. I would have thought that the obvious thing was that if... Non-racism um, is going to apply, it's going to apply to every single individual on this planet. And then, you know, otherwise what's going on? We're just looking for new problems that are not there because, you know, as I say, um, feminism came in, did all it needed to do, right? So um, once uh, feminism was made redundant, once Britain was onto its, um, you know, had a queen and a prime minister, and then of course when Theresa May came out and, uh, and became Britain's second prime minister, even when Benazir Bhutto was prime minister of Pakistan, a Muslim country, you know, and um, there's been plenty of female leaders all the way along. When we got to that point, you still had these man-hating feminists who were still complaining about the patriarchy. But then what happened was, um, all of a sudden, the, uh, the trans activism came out. And then they, the men decided, well, I mean, there were some people who were genuinely going through gender reassignment surgery and, you know, not, the thing is, I thought we'd settled this. I thought that wasn't a problem either. But then a few opportunists came along. Men who were a bit pervy, a bit autogynophilic or whatever, would take advantage of their new um, protected status in Western countries and we've had a few cluster B personality disorder types of people who've been hiding behind the trans movement in order to cause intimidation and mayhem and just fear amongst women. And we've got women out there who don't like the idea of um, people who were born biologically male winning all the Olympic sports medals and stuff like that. And of course, um, what are these people called? They're called TERFs. And the most famous turf of all is J.K. Rowling, who now, as this new legislation has um, come in, has decided that she wants to hand herself in for arrest in Scotland now because um, she said that she's not going to change her opinion about all of these things. She doesn't want um, biological males to be competing in sports with women who were born women. She doesn't want biological males um, to be um, coming into women-only spaces like female changing rooms and women's toilets and all of that. Um, and I am of the opinion, myself, that people should be entitled to voice their different opinions when it comes to stuff like this. 
You know, you can't be told, right, this is the opinion you must have, this is the way it is, and if you don't agree with us, you're a hater, therefore you're a hate criminal, and now you can go to prison for it. So, yeah, J.K. Rowling is going to be handing herself in um, to be arrested for this, and this man who hates white people wants to make hate illegal for a country that is predominantly 96% white. So he hates the country he's in, he hates the people he governs over, um, he wants to criminalise them all, he says he wants to go after everyone, despite the fact that um, Scotland um, can't even police its own crime. And Mark Stein was right about the UK, that it, it has become a country where everything is policed except crime. You know, I mean, that's the, the thing. So I'm glad I'm not there now. And could this spread to England? I mean, God knows what's going on. But the thing is, this is going to be a very, very unpopular law. It's going to cause a lot of problems for a lot of people. And um, JK Rowling is definitely going to be pushing and pushing and pushing um, until she gets arrested. She's going to become a martyr of this, right? So we'll see how it goes. Now, of course, back in the day, before the trans thing come along, I would have thought of her as a lefty man-hating feminist myself. But the thing is, um, when it comes to this particular um, issue, I do agree with her, and I think she does have a good point. Because, you know, you can get good causes, uh, you can hide behind good causes, good deeds, virtue signaling, and all of that stuff, and you can use it as a means to bring in bad laws and to bring in totalitarian laws, you know? And this is clearly what is happening. That's why I say, you know, you kind of knew where you stood with the original far right because they didn't bullshit you. They told you what they were. And the far left don't. They pretend that they're hiding behind all these good things. Oh, look how good we are. We're gooder than you. Look, we're so good that we get invited to all these dinner parties. <laughs> you know, it's basically what it comes down to. And then if they have the wrong opinion, they're not allowed. You know, diversity is allowed. But the only thing that diversity means is you get this assortment of united colours of Benetton people all with exactly the same views and all with exactly the same, um, you know, political opinions. And it comes down to what is referred to now as luxury beliefs. Because, you know, in order to be middle class, you have to have the right opinions. You have to mind your P's and Q's and you have to be the same as all of those other people that are like that. Otherwise, you're not invited to a dinner party and you're a bad person. You're deeply immoral. How dare you have unpopular opinions? You, you racist, you sexist, you transphobe, you Islamophobe, you, you istophobe of every kind whatsoever. And now um, it's becoming a crime in Scotland and where's this going to spread to next and what sorts of problems is it going to bring? I hope this um, brings the end to the SNP and I hope that they are banished to the wilderness forever after this and I hope old Hamza Yusuf comes a useless, you know, um, you know, gets some sort of comeuppance. Now, I wouldn't wish anything bad or violent or anything like that on him, but I would wish for him to experience a reality check of sorts to bring it back to him that, you know, what he is doing is wrong. His old hatred for white people is wrong. If he hates white people so much, why does he want to rule over them? Cluster B personality disorder. Again, that's all it comes down to. That's all I can think of at the moment. You know, it tends to attract people to power, doesn't it? it attracts those types of people to power. So I'm going to go over to another clip. Now, um, this basically is Anne Widdicombe doing a monologue on GB News. So all I've got to say, just put aside what your opinions on Anne Widdicombe are. You know, I'm showing you this clip because she's putting it very concisely. Um, in a way, of course, that um, I haven't found anyone do in the shortest amount of time. So I think it's very important that you forget it's Anne Widdicombe talking if you don't like her and just listen to what she says because I can't disagree with any of this. And even if you have prejudices against GB News, I mean, they're not my favourite channel anymore, no. But um, what I will say is that I cannot disagree with this. So, you know, if you're, if you're still with me, just watch this clip and I'll see you at the other end. Well, the Scottish Government has hammered down the final nail in the coffin of freedom of expression. Today marks the Scottish Nationalists' Hate Crime Act coming into full effect, with 411 centres being set up across the region, whereby individuals can go and report their fellow citizens for allegedly stirring up hatred against a given social group. 
This law was actually passed back in March of 2021 uh, when the very little Miss Nicola Sturgeon uh, was still in power. But the current First Minister, Hamza Youssef, was then the Justice Secretary and very much behind this legislation. Indeed, the legislation builds on existing UK law, namely the Public Order Act 1986. Now, although I'm not a fan of the Act, owing to its vagueness, at least it recognised one sensible principle, that the law ought to protect private conversations inside people's own homes. But Humza Yousaf's censorship law does away even with that. Indeed, back in 2020, before the law passed, he explicitly said, are we comfortable giving a defence to somebody whose behaviour is threatening or abusive or which is, which is intentionally stirring up hatred, are we saying that that's justified because it's in the home? So, under Humza Yousaf's tyrannical rule, not only are the freedoms of the public forum being eroded, but the freedom to say what you like within the four walls of your own home. But this law defines hate crime as any crime which is understood by the victim or any other person as being motivated, wholly or partly, by malice or ill will towards a social group. In other words, impartiality is discarded, evidence is discarded, all that matters is the perception of the complainant. Already we're seeing the looming consequences of this legislation. Just today, Siobhan Brown, the SNP's Community Safety Minister, suggested that J.K. Rowling's so-called misgendering of trans-identifying individuals could be liable to prosecution. But Humza Yousaf really ought to be careful not to throw stones in the glass house of Hollywood. Hollywood. The words were malice or ill will towards a social group. So can I remind you of what he said in 2020? Lord Justice Clark, white. Every High Court judge, white. Every chair of every public body is white. Oh, wouldn't it be a shame if someone were to take this legislation to its natural conclusion and report Humza Yousaf to the police for a clear display of malice or ill will towards white people. That Scotland's ethnic makeup is actually 95% white seems completely lost on this Scottish dictator. Funnily enough, Humza Yousaf was reported to the police for breaking the SNP's Hate Crime Act when he said, quite justifiably, about a year ago, that the transgender rapist Isla Bryson should not have been in a women's prison. And he said, Isla Bryson is a rapist who's completely at it. I don't think they're a genuine trans woman. I think they're trying to play the system. But how interesting that he insisted on referring to Isla Bryson as they. But it just goes to show that regulating speech is not only undesirable, but it's also practically impossible. Police Scotland have promised to investigate every single complaint. But with nearly 7,000 complaints between 21 and 22, it's clearly untenable. Or well, perhaps this pledge has something to do with Police Scotland uh, have implemented a new trial to simply not investigate certain types of crime, with an estimated 24,000 offences a year no longer being allocated to frontline officers. Well, if you're confused by any of this from Police Scotland, don't worry, don't worry. They've issued a profoundly helpful explainer about hate crimes last year involving the hate monster. He'll make you want to have a go at somebody. A neighbour, somebody on the street, on a night out. Security guy on the door, somebody in the chappy, your taxi driver. He'll make you want to vent your anger, just cause folk look or act different for you. The hate monster wants you to feel what you need to show. You're better than them. Then, before you know it, you've committed a hate crime. Well, make of that what you will. And do let me know as well at mailmog at gbnews.com. Right. Well, you know, I can't say any more. I don't know what else to say. You've got to bear in mind, right? Now, I've got to be a little bit careful of what I say. 
The thing is, right, the, uh, the last thing I should do if I value my sanity, my safety, my freedom, right, is criticise where I am now because they don't take very well to it here. It is a bit more authoritarian in certain ways, right, than the Western world. But it's also less authoritarian in other ways than the Western world. Nowhere in the world is perfect. But I absolutely guarantee you that if, you know, someone of expat background who, you know, grew up here with two white parents and were an ethnic minority of 100% European origin, got them to a point where they started becoming a political activist complaining about the country being too brown, it would not end well for them. I tell you, it would absolutely not end well for them at all. And I'm now starting to think, well, maybe that's a good fail-safe here. <laughs> maybe that is a good fail-safe here. Because, you know, I, one of the things I will say that I like about being here in the Philippines is that no one, in my experience so far, is racist towards me. All right, you kind of get used to the fact that they treat expats as cash cows and put the price up. That's just a, a cheeky Asian thing. They do that everywhere, you know, in the well, developing countries of Asia. It's not really an issue. But they're really just thinking of you as being richer. I mean, the whole thing's a fallacy, really, you know. That's the thing. But the truth of the matter is I never, ever experienced um, that level of hostility. People were usually nice to me here, you know, and the same went when I was in Costa Rica. Most people were, were nice to me there too, you know? And um, I didn't have any issues about any of it. And it's actually nice to not be on the receiving end of racism for being white. But in the UK, I can't guarantee it. I could just be sure that if I lived in an area where, you know, if I lived in a sort of poor multicultural area, I think it would be a bit risky these days. I think a lot of people have been turned against, and even in the case of left-leaning middle-class activist types, been turned against themselves. There's self-racism there now. And it's just so fucking ridiculous, is it not? And it's a two-tier system, isn't it? Because you can't, you know, I mean, I, I've never been far right. I despised all those skinheads back in the day. I'm old enough to remember the real far right. The youngsters these days have got absolutely no idea about any of this stuff. They don't know what the real far right were like. No, you know, that's the thing. And yet the, you know, the, uh, I don't know what they call it, the Overton window or the spin machine, you know, if you want to call it that. Uh, basically, people have moved it so that, you know, if you're not far left, you're far right now in the Western world. And it's just so fucking blatantly stupid. So yes, Scotland, you need another William Wallace. You need some people to rise up and take back from these ridiculous totalitarian lunatics that you have at the top, you know? You really do. And you need to sort this out. And I honestly think that, you know, what's going to happen, you know, is that uh, once J.K. Rowling becomes a martyr, and she's absolutely going to push and push and push and push to get herself arrested. She absolutely definitely is. She's going to push it so that she has to go to prison. And you know why I reckon she's doing it? Because I reckon that she has a very good chance of being able to convince a reasonable judge that this law is a bad law. And if she does do that, she will basically create case law which will undermine this entire unenforceable, entirely unenforceable legislation and just make the whole thing crash down with it. And I think that if you are in Scotland, vote for absolutely bloody anyone. I know you don't like the Conservatives. I know you don't like Labour. I don't particularly like the Conservatives or Labour myself either. But for God's sake, you've got to get rid of the SNP. You know, this socialist, nationalist, party that you've got. What happened last time socialism and nationalism got together in the world? What do you think happened then? It was some, yeah, some bloke with a slanted fringe and a funny moustache. You remember him? Yeah, right. So what happens next? Is, um, is Humza Useless going to want to start um, <laughs> killing off Whitey? Because honestly, the way he talks, the way he sounds, that venom, vitriol, anger in his voice like that, you know, I was brought up to believe that racism was wrong. All racism was wrong, you know? 
And of course, being from an Irish background, I know also that when it comes to the whole level of cultural discrimination, it doesn't just stop at skin colour. But I've seen, as I've said time and time and time again, I've seen the English become less and less and less like that over time, and I think that's good. And maybe it did involve a little bit of social engineering to make them a little bit less like that. But then they all got carried away, didn't they? The whole political correctness machine got carried away and it got really stupid. And now we've got to a point where it's just blatant propaganda, totalitarianism and some new form of communism that's come in now. Well, I ain't going back to Scotland. Absolutely bloody not, you know. And I honestly think that, well, you know, I think there should be an exodus from Scotland. Just move down to England. Go on, Scots, move down to England. I know you don't like the English. <laughs> not much, but... But, God, you know, I mean, it's virtually the Mediterranean compared to where you live. I know it's a little bit flatter and you don't have the mountains and stuff like that, but... God, you'll, you'll get ten times more sunshine if you move down to Devon, right? That's the thing. And if there's any political um, asylum seekers that we don't mind, we don't mind the Scots. Just, just don't bring too many of your alkies or your junkies down. And we've got enough of them. But come down to England. Just, just empty it out. Just le leave, um, leave uh, Scotland to Hamza Useless and all his friends, you know? And, um, and that's it. Just, just, just do that. Uh, and, of course, well... The way things are going, it won't be long before England follows in its footsteps. So maybe everyone in the Western world should just fucking leave the West at this point. You know, let the West die. I mean, I'm at that point now where I'm thinking, well, you know, yes, I'm, I'm kind of, I, I like, you know, having this accent that I got. I like growing up with that legacy of rock and roll, humour, comedy and all the rest of it. I like the legacy of the cultural heritage of the place that I came from. But that place now is dead. And there's no point trying to save the Titanic, you know, is there really at this point? No, I think it's, it's just absolutely moribund at this point, for want of a better word there. So, um, I don't know what else to say, really. I'll be interested in your comments um, down below. You know, you can tell me what you think. Um, you know, maybe, uh, maybe what, what needs to be done is... Um, Someone, you know, like I said, uh, I said in the past, you know, someone in Scotland might say something like, Ugh, this deep fried marsbar is shite, right? Well, maybe if uh, Hums are useless, gets a couple of uh, drinks down him, right? And then maybe someone should make him a deep fried Mars bar with very, very light coloured batter and have him say, this deep fried Mars bar is sweet. <laughs> That's it comes to mind there. Uh, you know, sorry, I couldn't resist it. But yeah, that's it. You have had Nicola Sturgeon. You've had, um, you've had, uh, what was it, Alex Salmon. So look forward to the next First Minister being Hamish Muk, Japanese Muk Fighting Fish, or whatever his name would be. Get the, get the fish people back and get rid of the useless people. Hey, good on you. Good luck, Scotland. You need it right now, you know. Right, should we leave it at that? But I think after making this video, I'd better not get a plane to Edinburgh, otherwise I'll be arrested and then I'll be banged up. And what I could do, I suppose, is just, uh, I don't know, um, I've got long hair anyway, all I've got to do is just start acting camp, put a little bit of makeup on, put a couple of, um, I don't know, fake tits in. Maybe I'll end up in the cell with JK Rowling and we could bang the world to rights about what a useless twant useless man is. Hey, all right then, see you later, alligator. See you soon. Baboon. If you like this content, don't forget to like, subscribe and share. And while you're at it, check out all our social media links. Please help this channel grow. Your help will be appreciated.